Hello and welcome to Mountain Aromatics. Today I thought I would go over some of your questions that I have gotten. Um, a lot of times I will go in there and type answers. Um, and thank you for those people who also go in and answer some of the questions. It's um, awesome to get other perspectives as well. That's really cool. So, um, just going to start in. This one is from Brian Souza. By next week, I will be making a bottle of Ambroxite solution and a separate solution of Timber Silk. Um, should both be at 20% material to alcohol maximum? Also, um, so I'll just start and answer that one first. If you're making um, ambroxide is a powder and yes you can do a 20% um, solution I think it will even in perfumers alcohol I think it will even go up to 40% of the ambroxide to 60% um, perfumers alcohol solution but 20 percent is absolutely great perfect especially if you do all your materials at 20 percent you could do that timber silk is um is a liquid and you do not have to dilute it down to 20 percent at all um it's like i iso -E super they're in the same family it's just a tiny bit stronger than ISO E Super. I don't see a need necessarily, unless all your all your materials are at 20%, you can take your 10% down to 20%. But otherwise, it comes as a liquid and you don't need to dilute it down. Also, next, next part of the question, also will my non-denatured Perfumers alcohol be a good solvent or does it matter? Non-denatured perfumers alcohol? Um, you can use different solvents like DPG or, IS or um, IPM, isopropyl myristate, or perfumers alcohol. My understanding, all perfumers alcohol is, all of that is, is denatured. Now they're confusing me because, yeah, I mean, because they'll, t so you can get perfumers alcohol at 190%. I've seen you could purchase it. I use the 200. That's just what I use. Um, it doesn't mean that the 190 is bad or anything like that, but the perfumers alcohol that I use is 200. Um, so next question, I am going to mess up the name. Um, Ari Reynoldy. I'm destroying the name. Anyway, as a newbie for fragrance creation, I am so lucky to have found your channel. It's absolutely a gem. I have a question. Thank you for that. Uh, if I have three note fragrance, let's say bergamot essential oil at the top, cinnamon essence oil as a mid, um, we'll get to that in a second, and then sandalwood essence oil she says all of i'm assuming she means essential oils for all of those as a base did we need three fixatives that smell close to the bergamot the cinnamon and the sandalwood or every other fixative are just fine um so with the cinnamon essential oil if you're just having three the bergamot, cinnamon, and sandalwood, I'm going to say mm, on the cinnamon, that is highly, highly skin 
there's a sensitivity with skin it will burn your skin it will it will feel like it's on fire you have to use that in such minute 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 amount I don't you know what I, I don't even you I don't even use cinnamon essential oil I I, I, I don't um, I think I may have a cinnamon co2 it's brought down to like a 1% and I will use that in a big formula. So a tiny, tiny, but just pure essence. So that's the first thing. But the other thing is, let's say you have bergamot, something other, some other type of mid, mid note, and then a sandalwood. Do you need fixatives? One, you don't have to have fixatives, but if you're gonna use a fixative, um, you don't need fixatives to match each of those three things that smell like that. Absolutely not. And a lot of times fixatives like Fixator 505E, um, I keep mine at like 10%. You can use just one drop of that and Fixator 505E will not change the smell of your formula. Um, it just, it, it, it won't, you don't, you can use fixatives that have nothing to do with your formula that you're making. And there are a number of fixatives that just don't have an aroma. They just, or if they do, it's just so slight. If you have, if you're putting it in a formula, you're not going to smell it. It's just, yeah. Oh, next one, the, a name, I'm going to destroy the name. Um, first name is E-E-S-A-A, -A, Effendi. Um, I recently got back, or I recently got my black agar from Perfumer's Apprentice, and also, and although at first sniff it smells amazing, I can tell exactly which oud fragrance it's in. Well, that's really cool. That being said, I blended it in a number with a number of aroma chemicals, and now I can't smell it in the blend. Is there an aroma chemical to add with black agar to give it that strong oud note? So I'm just gonna assume you're saying black agar from Giveco. The other black agar is a little bit harder to acquire. Um, and it is different. I think it's by Fermanish, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not mistaken. But so the black agar, you're telling me you're putting it in a blend and you can't smell it in the blend. Well, if it's in a, just I'll just show you one of my last blends that that I did recently so this is just one small formula that I did and had I put one drop of the black agar in here when I just have it so it's undiluted when I go and smell more than likely I'm not going to smell I'm smelling the headspace I'm not gonna smell the black agar so you typically you're going to smell the top notes here. I smell a lot of bergamot and lemon in, in this. And that's mostly because it's the, kind of the top notes. So if I, however, let it sit for a while, whatever, and then I dilute it down to this one's at a 10%. If I dilute it down to 10% and then I put, you know, dip this in there and then let it dissipate and then smell, at the beginning, I'm still going to get a little bit of the top notes, but eventually, you know, the middle notes will come in and then the the bottom note, and you'll smell the oud, but it's going to be usually like black agar I can I I smell it in the middle note and the bottom note and <clears throat> it just will be the last thing the day a day later 
your oud is what's going to be left on the scent strip, scent strip, even like two, three days later, come back and smell it. But you will smell it when you dilute it and then when you put it on you, but later. It's going to be, some time is going to go by. So it, I know you, you may, and, it, and there, it's not necessarily strong, but even if you put like one drop, it's just going to be later that you're going to smell it and just in the concentrate of your formula, you're, it, you're, you probably won't smell your black agar because it's being masked at, from, uh, as the, from the top note or covering it up. Because in the headspace, that's just, that's what you're getting more of because the molecules are lighter for the top notes. So don't give up on that because um, you'll smell it. And that's why it can be confusing in the beginning. Like you said, I'm really confused because it's a beautiful aroma chemical. I, I get you because that kind of stuff happened with me kind of in the beginning, like of, of figuring stuff out. But that's where you will smell things down the line. <laughs> Oh my God, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, next. Um, this is from Barbara um, Chap Chapius. I'm destroying names. I am horrible with that kind of stuff. Um, this one, I just wanted to read. Um, she has just been a supporter of mine for a really long time. Um, and she says, Dave, I just received your sample of Celebrare. You've outdone yourself. Superb. Ah, I just wanted to read that because that makes me feel awesome. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Barbara. Nicole Banks, how do you use DPG or what can you use it in? DPG is dipropylene glycol. It is a solvent and it is high purity. It's designed um, for perfumes, colognes. You can use it in, it's going to be an anti-perspirants, um, like deodorants. It's used in skin care, lotions, shaving creams, bath and body product. It is, it really is used everywhere because it's odorless and it um, is water soluble. And what else do you need to know? It, um, so when you're using oil and waters, it's, um, it, it does well in the mix of oils and waters, like lotions is, or have oil and water. And that's why it does that. So, um, yeah, um, actually Dow the Dow company came up with a really high grade of it. And that's what, when you buy DPG, typically it's going to be, it'll, you won't know it, but it'll end up being from Dow. And it's a really low skin irritant. That's another reason it's used a lot. And you can use it in, instead of um, IPM, you can use it as your, if you have crystals and you are, needing to dilute your crystals down. Also, it helps with a formula that has crystals in it and using some DPG to bring that temperature to lower the, um, it's not gonna lower the temperature, but if you stick it in the freezer, the crystals aren't gonna fall out. But DPG helps with keeping it stabilized and um, keeps from forming crystals in colder climates. So if you have to send one of your perfumes off it and it goes to a really, really cold place, the crystals that you do have in your formula won't fall out into crystals at the bottom because that would be a problem. Um, Dustin Smith says, thank you for posting this. I did a thing on, it was my one on linden blossoms, how to make perfume rich floral. He says, thank you for posting this. I was trying to decide if I should get some linen, linden absolute. 
very expensive. And you helped me make up my mind. I am new to natural perfumery. This is important. And I am excited to watch your videos. Awesome. Would you recommend Plumeria? Um, I too love the stronger florals. So Plumeria, the other name is Frangipani. And the absolute is expensive. And it is, to me, not one of the heavy florals. It's beautiful, but I... And there are going to be people out there that are going to disagree with me, which is fine. I don't consider it into the heavy florals. If you are wanting, if you, you do natural perfumery, so I'm telling you, tuberose is expensive. Oh my God, it's my favorite. It is so my favorite. Oh my God, I love tuberose. Um, you... But when you buy your tuberose absolute, and you should definitely have jasmine absolute, I hope you love it because it's in everything. Um, and pick out a Turkish rose or Moroccan rose, some type of rose absolute, because you don't have to buy a ton of the absolutes because you don't use it at 100%. You're going to dilute that down like to a 1% or, a, you know, at maximum like a 5% and use that in your formula. So it will make more than what you're just buying. But those are the heavy white florals that I really, really, really love. However, you need to know like your Rose Absolute, that is highly restricted, highly restricted because there's so so many aroma chemicals in it and that's why like you I was in natural perfumery first and then I started learning about the aroma chemicals and nature identicals and that is why buying a rose accord which is much more which has probably 40 30 40 aroma chemicals instead of 600 where you can people can easily have allergic reactions to or skin irritations whatever that kind of stuff so that's why a lot of times um, you'll want to look at that but the other thing I would recommend about natural perfumery um, if you're into natural perfumery if you're just starting what you need to know and look into are the nature, not the nature identicals, but the um, individual molecules that are natural, like linalol acetate, linalol oxide, linalol, um, those things, because you're going to need them. Because just using lemon essential oil, patchouli, you know, that kind of stuff um, is not going to get you very far. So there's a lot of other stuff like benzoin. Um, that is really awesome. You need to make sure you're stretching way out and finding all the little different types of naturals that you can get. Um, like Ciprol. Ciprol has a, um, has a dirty, woody, no, a dirty rooty leather that's how you're going to get your leather is from Ciprol and stuff like that to branch out if you're doing natural perfumery next um nav chahil probably said it wrong okay hi i wanted to make molecule o1 and o2 i understand isoe super is used for o1 i will tell you I can almost guarantee you it's um, the IsoE Super that they will use for Molecule 01 is a form of IsoE Super that they only can get their hands on and it's not exactly the same um, isomers 
that the ISOE Super that we have. It's a little different, but it's still good. Look, I've done it. It's awesome. Um, I wanted to know if Timber Silk or Silver Amber is better than ISOE Super. <clears throat> it's not better than. It is, they are slightly different. They have more of, Timber Silk is a tiny bit stronger and Silva Amber is a tiny bit stronger than those two. And the ISOE Super is almost more clear, see-through, can't really touch it. And this Timber Silk is a little bit more cloudy where you can start to see it and that kind of thing. And then when you move on to Silver Amber, it's a little bit more there you're able to kind of see it more and feel it more it's not as see near as see-through and i'm talking about smells just so, so we're clear but they're different isomers each one i wanted to make a, a to make weak w-e-a-k -E scent fragrance better which is better um well just like i said the 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 we the the one that is the least amount the le has the least aroma if you use one gram one gram one gram the one with the least amount of aroma is going to be the isoe super <clears throat> which is better it depends um my f personal favorite is timber silk but there's places i would not use timber silk i would use isoe super <laughs> There's other times I would use like, the silver, silver amber, which is, there's times when that's better. Um, obviously, I want the lady, obviously, I want the ladies to like it. So if you can help me out, I would appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> well, I hope that helped. Ambroxan is the, the molecule O2. It can give that certain boost by making, so making Molecule O2 properly. It's one of those times where I'm like, I, I don't know what they're saying. Um, I love it. Um, in fact, the Ambroxan, I love Cetalox. <laughs> oh, if you like Ambroxan, you need to get you some Cetalox. It's in the same family. People are going to say it's it's the, it's the same thing. Well, when you get into it deeper, you'll find it does. It is. It's different because even <clears throat> the Ambroxan from IFF and the Ambroxan from KO KAO. It's, it's Ambroxan from both of those companies, and they're slightly different. Cetalox is even more different. And it has a sweet note that is not quite present in the other two. Cetalox, I will I wear it by itself. That's my molecule is Cetalox. And you can put a like a one drop of Cetalox in the Isoe Super, which I've done. <laughs> I have a fragrance, it's just Isoe Super and Cetalox, and that's beautiful. Oh my god, I love it. Next. The other one doesn't have a name. It just has, like, numbers. Anyway, how do you finish your perfume when using tinctures to stop its smell of alcohol? This was my, the basics of making natural perfume on fixatives. So, you can't, you don't finish a perfume where you make it not smell like alcohol. Um, so use, I use tinctures in formulas. When I use my tinctures, it's probably 5% of a formula or less. And I don't get a, um, alcoholic smell. But I, I don't use vodka. I don't use, I, I use perfumer's alcohol when I make my 
tinctures. I'm not saying that's how you have to do it. I'm just saying that's what I do. And um, when you're spraying, like you have a, your finished perfume like you're talking about and you smell just alcohol, if you spray and then smell, you're going to smell alcohol. The alcohol is there as a medium to bring it to you to spread it out allowing the molecules to spread out all the alcohol will dissipate and what you're left with are your aroma chemicals um, be they natural or made in a lab or anyway so just don't spray and then smell you're going to be smelling the app the alcohol that's evaporating so give it a minute before you smell and that's how you'll stop smelling the alcohol next um this is from nicole banks uh, on the video how to make a floral perfume do carrier oils blend together with grain alcohol at all yes they they can like if i add three drops of the grain alcohol would I mix together or or would it like if I add three drops of grain alcohol would it mix together or still separate um, good question and you're talking not just carriers but you're talking about a carrier oil so if you had a um, a roll-on and you were making a formula in a roll-on and your carrier is an oil and you're just adding a few drops of the grain alcohol mm -mm. isn't it's not going to mix the higher and, and you're talking about grain alcohol so there's water in grain alcohol as well if you used perfumers alcohol it has mine is like 200 and if you had like this is this is a, if if you had a carrier oil and then I added the rest and I filled the rest of this up with perfumers alcohol it will absolutely blend and mix but if you're talking about a carrier oil anytime you're using when you're using a carrier oil i'm not sure when you would want to introduce grain alcohol um yeah um so like when I make all my formulas, when I do this, I'm, 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 I'm not using a carrier oil at all. When I'm using a carrier oil is like when I'm doing massage therapy and I have a container of different types of oil, like sweet almond oil, fractionated coconut oil blended together. And I may put a couple of drops of different aroma chemicals in there to have a beautiful smell to the oil there's that is when I'm using a carrier oil is for oils and I'm not going to introduce there's no need or reason to introduce alcohol um, if I am not understanding what you're talking about let me know it's just like two different types of fragrances even if it's like in a, a, a roller ball that's carrier oils no alcohol needed um, I mean if you have a 10% solution of something and that's one of your drops that's fine it'll it, it will be fine I've done that before but when I'm doing my fragrances, I'm never using carrier oils with my perfume fragrances, meaning alcohol fragrances. I hope that helps.
<clears throat> Next. I'm never going to get this name. Um, and then Tasia. I'm just going to stick with that. Now, thank you, Dave. Do natural perfumes fall under dermal recommended concentrations? In other words, can I, for instance, put three mils of Jasmine Absolute in a 30 ml bottle since this will be sprayed on the skin? I'm assuming you mean, can I put three mils of Jasmine Absolute in a 30 ml bottle and fill the rest up with perfumer's alcohol and therefore you have a 10% solution. Um, can I then spray that on the skin? It depends on the, it, you know, Jasmine Absolute. You know, spraying that on at a 10% solution you need to go to IFRA and check out um, if that will be to, to, I don't remember offhand what the restriction is on that. Most of um, naturals are going to be more restricted. I promise you, way more restricted than any aroma chemical not more than any, but most aroma chemicals that you're going to have. Because a lot of these are a chemical, an, an aroma chemical, one chemical. And like with the Jasmine Absolute, it's hundreds of individual molecules that are different. And so that's why it can be way more um, sensitizing to the skin. Um, do natural perfumes fall under dermal recommended concentrations? Yeah. Um, yeah, like they're just going to be way more, you need to be more careful with those on the skin than you do a lot of the individual molecules show and some of them like the citruses it is spraying on the skin and then getting out in the sun some of them the citruses you can spray on the skin not a big deal if you never go out in the sun at all then it's just it will not be an issue it's the sun exposure on that where you sprayed on the skin with some of those citruses that it will burn burn the skin it is it can like really be really bad at times so <clears throat> but yes so they're gonna be um, you just have to um, go look them up a lot of times when you buy an individual um, so here I have key lime essential oil a lot of times on the website where you buy it if it's a reputable website they're going to share with you what the one they'll have papers on it and you can just click on the paper and you can find out and a lot of times they'll have you know only use at a three percent dilution that type of thing so a lot of times you'll find it on that website where you bought it, if it's reputable. Let's see. Yeah, this is my last one. This is from Wyoming Park. What up? Oh my God. Dave, is your raspberry ketone diluted? Yes, because it's a powder. Because I have that in 100% powder or crystals. I can't remember which one it is. Um... I personally interchange the word powder and crystals, like whatever. To me, it's the same thing, powder crystals. Yeah, the raspberry ketone, raspberry ketone methyl ether, both of those, they are different. They're different. Yay. Because I love them. Oh, my God. They're, they will bring absolute sugar sweetness to your formula. If you are looking for sugar sweetness with raspberry, which raspberry is my favorite fruit. Oh my God. 
those two are amazing. They both can be diluted down to their they will recrystallize pretty easy. It's you need to go to like a 10% solution and that's kind of your max. I, I don't think that you're going to get it to dilute any further than 10%. Uh, it, you could do, you could easily do a 5% and it will still be, they're strong. And what I mean by when you open it, it's not like strong, like, oh my God, that's strong. It's not like that. It is just powerful. It, they're just um, not hitting the nose. I don't mean that because they are just beautiful and soft, but they're just really, even, even at 10%, it's like, whoa, you can smell the raspberry and the sugar and they are just beautiful. So strong as in one drop in a formula at the 10% and you're good. Just start with one drop and check your formula and then see if you want to do another drop or, or two. If you're doing a floral sweet, go ahead, put more because it's, it's just beautiful. Think about it, raspberries and roses together. It's, just, it's beautiful. I love tuberose and raspberry together as well. But yes, raspberry ketone, raspberry ketone, methyl ether. Both are powders or crystals and dilute them down to like 10% and always weigh your dilutions. Um, I'll do one more. Here we go. Because this is what I talked about earlier. This is about the Fixator 505. I can't even pronounce the name. Um, Nacodiliosis or something like that. Oh my God. Would you change the scent of an actual perfume that it that I made or will it make it last longer? That's what he said. So I think, I think what they're saying is if I add Fixer 505, would it change the perfume aroma? Is it going to change what my fragrance formula smells like? No. And again, all you need, do your fix it or 505. You could do it down way down. I mean, even 10% is super not strong, but you could do it down to a 1% easily, a 5%, and do one drop in a formula, and you're good to go, and it's not going to change your formula, the structure of your fragrance, of the aroma at all. It's just not. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your kind support. I really appreciate it. Um, I um, it was a massage therapist and a marriage and family therapist. And just obviously for the last like nine months, I've had just nothing. So it's been really difficult. And... Um, yeah, I just, I really appreciate your kind support. I am just so grateful and thankful that you are here and that you are watching this. And I am grateful that I have the opportunity to take the time to be able to study and learn all of this stuff and then share it with you. So I want to share freely with you. And, um... I hope this helps you, and I hope this helps you in a therapeutic way. It Absolutely, that is how I got started in this. It's just so therapeutic for me, so I'm, I'm not done. So, one of the main thing, if I were to tell you one thing today that really means a lot to me, is how you can make scent memories, and... I've told this story before because this story really conveys what I mean. So it's kind of like if you had a new dad to be and they were pregnant or gonna adopt whatever. 
that is when I would get a brand new fragrance that I really, really enjoyed that I thought, let's say it was going to be I don't know, a daughter. So that I just would imagine my daughter might like as well, but it's a fragrance I wear. And so the only time I wear this fragrance is every doctor appointment that has to do with her, her birthday, every single birthday, like any special occasion for her, any of her graduations, anything like that, I would wear that particular fragrance every single time it had, there was something special to do with her or you and her. If you went out on, um, daddy daughter dates, whatever, I would wear that fragrance every single time. So I'm making a scent memory with and for her. And actually it would be for me as well. Cause every time I work, well, who am I going to think of? My daughter. So creating a scent memory like that you can do, and you can do that with yourself for every time you go on a vacation. You can do that with you and a friend, you and a partner, you and family member, like whatever, but just scent memories. And also you can, when you have really, really bad memories about certain places, you can change those with scent memories and have something something that you really, really like and slowly incorporate it towards that where you're, you're having to go near this place or whatever and slowly changing that memory into something positive. And that you'll need to do gradually, like... I don't know. It's just if it's a negative memory that you're trying to change, it's something you need to do slowly. Um, I could see some people wanting to gradually do that, and I can see some people wanting to go, hell, I just want to do it fast. I'm going to just completely change the memory, and I'm going to make it totally different with this aroma that I love. And there'll be people who want to do it that way. Anyway, scent memory making scent memories. That is one of the main things that I love about aromas and perfumery, that kind of stuff. It's just really cool to me. So I just thought I would share that. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your love, kindness, and support. Um, I will see you on the next Mountain Aromatics. Have a good day.